Hey everyone, this is Christina from Pip Supply, and today we're going to show you guys how to tie a variety of our bows. And we're not only going to show you one way, we're going to show you three different ways. So there's three of us that are going to be tying today. We're, we all tie differently, so we're going to show you guys a few different ways, and then we're going to also show you um, how to get a few different looks with the Ruth bow. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I'm gonna start with our Ruth bow. And if you notice on the Ruth, they have slanted edges and they're going the opposite way. So if you fold them like this, you'll see the two ways that they slant. I always tie mine with the slant on my left side facing away from me. So when I grab it like this, my left side slant is going away from me, okay? Um, then I just grab two loops like that. So each finger has a little loop. Then I cross them. So just like an X, just like that, okay? So pinching both sides, crossing, and then I take this finger, my pointer finger, and right here is a loop. You're gonna tuck that with your pointer finger into that loop, okay? And once you do that, <clears throat> you'll pull on both ends. <clears throat> Sorry, you'll pull on both ends and this is the important part because this is what's going to give you guys your shape and all of that stuff. You're going to want to make sure that the center is tightened properly. Otherwise, you're going to have like a floppy looking bow. So you grab with this side, your left side or whichever side is shorter, you're going to grab the opposite side and pull. Okay, so hold it. You grab your loop and you pull that to tighten your center. And then same thing on the other side. And you just kind of adjust until your bow, bow looks nice and full. And then do you see how I got my two edges or tails are matching? And then you got a nice Ruth bow. Um, Madison's gonna show you next. Are you ready, Madison? Yeah. You even got a name drop in there. I got a name. <laughs> well, there you go. She's gonna tie the velvet bow. All right. So she ties a little bit different. Okay, so I tie my bows a little bit different than Tina, and your edge is not really gonna look like this one. It's gonna go more out. Um, so I just take mine and I lay it on the table or whatever flat surface and bring them to the center so that I know that they're even on both sides. Then I just pick it up from the middle of each side and fold it in this way. So it kind of looks like a little bunny rabbit almost. And then I take it and cross it in the front and take the top right ear and push it through until it goes to the other side down here. Flip that little tail out, pull it, and then I just mess with it until this, I can get the center tight. And my edges of my bows go out like this, where the way Tina does it goes more down like this. So it's all just preference. Mm -hmm. And now here's how Wendy ties yeah. Ruth bows. Hey guys, this is Wendy. Um, so the way I do mine is I lay them flat and my left side will always be facing up. So then I'll do the same thing kind of like Madison but instead of how she flips them in, I will be flipping it out. And so I let the little wings kind of fly away, you know? Um, and so then we'll do an X as well. And then I'll just tuck the right side underneath and then kind of tighten that, make sure everything looks nice. Huh, that's really interesting. And then just kind of pull it a little tight. And I like to stick my thumbs inside. And then make a little bit of room in the back to fit the other one. And then once I have enough room to fit both my thumbs in, I grab the bottom and then start pulling from the little ears on the back side, if that makes sense. So you see how my thumbs so then I'll just kind of adjust. 
And there we go. Cute. So you got three different options here. These, her way she gets the tails going down. Madison's way has them going out. And then my way is down. But it was three different ways to tie. So hopefully that helps you guys out a little bit. And then one more thing I wanted to show you is a fun option. And it's like a, just a completely different way of getting your Ruth bow or a different style is once you tie it, however way you end up tying it, um, if you just keep tightening that center and you straighten out your ends, then you have a completely different bow style. And you can, we have these um, style bows on our headbands, but you can easily grab a headband and you can just slide it through the loop. I might have did that too tight. Let me see if I can get it in there. You can slide it through the loop and then you have a fun bow and it's made out of the same style bow of the Ruth, but it's just a different look to it. So lots of different options, lots of different ways to tie. Everybody ties a little bit differently, but hopefully this helped you guys out. Um, and then next up, we're going to show you how to do a few Isabels and how we tie them. So all three of us tie them a little bit differently. Okay, these are what we call our Isabel bows. We have three different sizes. We have a mini, a large, and an extra large or I guess it's just a regular Isabel. These are surged edge bows, so they have that threading on the edges of them. Um, and they're just a different way to tie. This is our velvet material. And how I do this one, so you fold it in half, make sure you have even amounts. And then about halfway up the one side, let me get this in the center, um, I lay it on my fingers. So I have three fingers and you can do it with two fingers. Like I said, everybody does it a little bit differently and I'm holding it with my thumb so it's not moving anywhere. And then I'm just gonna wrap it around, make sure this part stays straight, wrap it around, it goes behind, and then I twist it up, okay? And hold it with my pinky, okay? So around, twist up, hold with your pinky, and when it's back around on the other side, you're going to loop it, just like that, so loop, and you're gonna tuck it in, so tuck your thumb in the front part, and you're gonna tuck it right through your loop here. And you use your pointer finger and you're just gonna go in that loop and wrap it around and grab right where your middle finger is and just pinch it and pull it through. And you see how it's uneven. So this is where you're gonna to want to grab more from your left side so it pulls more onto your right side. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then it's all, you just wanna make sure everything is straight. Facing the right way. And then that's where you start adjusting it and getting it straightened out. So let's see, I'm gonna pull more from my left side cause it's a lot longer. And I'm gonna give it over to the right side just by kind of pulling it. Alrighty. And you got yourself a cute Isabel bow and like I said that center part is the most important because if it's not tightened right and like evenly it's gonna throw off your whole bow and it's gonna look floppy so you want a nice structured bow you got to make sure your center is tightened well and that's it and then you can easily flip it over add a clip we do recommend that you glue your backs like once your knot and your bow is exactly how you want it you just put a little glue underneath just to keep everything in place and that way it doesn't come undone especially if you are selling these you don't want them to come undone um, and then your customer have to figure out how to tie them. So hopefully that style or that way helps you. And then Madison's gonna show you her way next. All right, I'm back and I do mine a little bit different than Wendy and Tina, but this way will only work if the pattern doesn't matter that it gets flipped upside down. So if you have like a pattern like this where you know you want everything to be right side up, then I wouldn't recommend this way, but something like these leopard prints or checkers or the solids, this would work pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically the same as tying a Ruth, so I just take and I find like these two points right here and make the little bunny ears. And then I just cross over in the front, bring this part and the tail through the hole in the center and pull it out down here and tuck it. You might have to adjust a little bit if the backside is showing, but then you just tighten it up. And 
and adjust it till it looks good. How oh, cute. That looks great. And now it's time for Wendy. Cool, cool. All right, Wendy. Hey guys. All right, so my way is a little bit like um, Tina's, but instead of just wrapping it towards the back, I like to put it in between my fingers. And that way with my middle finger, I like to um, put a little pressure so it's not going anywhere. Um, so then I'll wrap it back over, make sure that this is nice and pretty. And then towards the back, I'm going to fold it over and then put it there. I will lift my middle finger and kind of grab onto it. And then I'm going to do just one little loop right here and it's gonna go into this top part and you'll just kind of adjust it, make everything look cute. And then on the back side, you can let go and move the other little wing in. Once you let go of all of that, you'll have something like this. And I like to put my thumbs in here thumb in the other little hole and then I'll grab onto the wings with my palms and just kind of slowly tug with my thumbs all while holding with palms and just kind of adjusting as I go and then just make sure everything's nice and snug and there you go All right, guys, that's everything. Hopefully that helps you out a little bit more, um, just giving you some different tying methods and just different ways people tie them and different styles of the way you can use the roofs and the different um, options on how they can turn out with the tails facing one way or the other way, how Madison had shown you. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and we'd love to help you guys out.